The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, folks. We've been talking about this big ABCD pattern for quite a few weeks now. It is in place. We made the D point. We've rallied five days now, folks. This is a five-day rally, and no one thought it could happen a few days ago. But by golly, here it is. Let's review one thing because I think this is uh, indicative of everything that I've seen in all of these charts for stocks, futures, uh, the stock indices and stuff. They all look pretty much exactly the same. And that is by looking at the chart of Tesla, you're going to get a pretty good idea of the harmony that we had here in the stock market over the past few months. That is a giant ABCD pattern, folks. It's just like the one in the stock market except for one thing, and that is the time sequence between A and B and C and D is absolutely perfect. In other words, the time and price comes in exactly as it's supposed to come in. Now, you can see on the far right here that you also had an ABCD here coming off of the 382. This was a 135 pattern right at the 382. That led to the big move down, and of course, now we're seeing the market start to rally. But it's interesting because, uh, you know, everything I do, folks, is A, B equals C, D. I live and die by it, and I live more than I die by it, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it isn't. But here's what we were looking at this morning coming in early. I posted this real early in the morning. Hold on just a second. I updated it just a second ago. Uh, well, not a second ago, about an hour or so ago because we were looking – this is a ABCD over a five-day period, and that target comes in above the 786 at uh, 91, excuse me, 9047. The high so far has been 9049. That completes that ABCD pattern. It's also, if you look at the red swing that you can see here, when we were still in the bear market, we had this huge rally. And guess what this one measures to, folks? Right to that rally right there. These rallies are exactly equal the market repeats itself over and over again and speaking of repeating ourselves over and over again we have a special treat for you today folks shane smolian will be on the air at 11:30 to give us his call on what he sees happening in the market and uh, i think we're going to have some fun things to talk about when we uh, visit with uh, shane now let's move over to uh, one other market that is really, really exciting, folks. This is what I was looking at yesterday uh, in the um, – hold on one second here. This is the natural gas. This thing is – it swings $5,000 like the S&P moves five points, folks. This thing really swings. There was the 382 retracement on the daily chart that we had back here matching the low – that we had here three weeks previous. Then we went up, and you can see we're making another higher high. Folks, I missed this yesterday. I was not feeling uh, uh, too good because of the old pollen and stuff, but by golly, if you were to take a look at this, I looked at it early this morning, and then I, I saw some of the things that were happening in it, and I said, oh, my God, the swings. It's already, it's already moved $10,000 today, folks, and it's still gone nowhere. Look at this. This is a perfect three drive to a top pattern, folks. There's drive one. There's drive two. There's drive three. Look at the time distance between the highs. Absolutely perfectly. I mean, you just can't make it up. It's just right on the money. 1.27 expansion up there at 9.54. And it dropped $5,000 and then rallied back $4,000 and then down $3,000. It's had a $12,000 move today, folks, and it's quarter after eight in Tucson time. Hello, operator. Get on board that puppy. That is the pork bellies of the futures market. Let me tell you, that thing really swings. I, I've been trading it for several years. I know very little about it, the participants in the market, but they must be really, really folks that love the risk because, by golly, that thing really, really moves around a lot. And that's what you like to see when we're seeing some of these things you know, unfold here. 
uh, today. So it's a uh, it's quite important that uh, we remember when you're trading these things, it's about how much money you don't lose, not about how much money you make. And that's uh, the real key to what we're watching here uh, this morning. Now, let's get back to one of the markets that we've been in for quite some time. It's holding its own, hasn't made a lot of money. In fact, it's trading. What's interesting here, this is the euro, folks. We've been short the euro here for uh, just about, hold on one second here. We've been short the euro here for about uh, three days now. Now, the difference is, is that we've not gone to a loss. We're still in a small profitable position of a couple hundred dollars. But what we've done is we've raised our stop over the previous day high up there at 17060 because uh, we sold it at 17037. I re Ooh, can't remember. Somewhere in that box. It's just a really small risk. And if we get above that, we want to exit because the market's staying at this level and not going down. It should have broken badly. It did. It broke about it broke about $900, but it came right back. And that's why we have to be really, really careful in here. We don't want this to turn into a big loss. So we keep our loss really small by putting our stop in. And if it's hit, and if it's hit, we go on and not worry about it. That's the, the main thing uh, that we're doing as we're looking at these charts here each day. Now, let's, let's move over to the gold market here, folks, because uh, we've had some big moves here in gold if you like a b c d and golly gee we like a b c d get this up here so we can take a look at it this is the gold market as you can see here over the past uh, eight days beautiful a b c d patterns all ending up here 1868 uh, the short was uh, due to come on at 1868 and we've had a pretty good break in it today. We broke up, uh, we broke all, we broke thirty dollars, which is uh, one half the har well, it is uh, the harmonic number in gold is thirty-two and sixty-four, and it went exactly to the three eight two retracement, folks. I just want to bring this to you uh, to your attention because, hold on, that's not the one I want to see. The attention one, that's not that one either. I've got a lot of charts here, and I'm hopefully able to get them to see it, to see everybody can see them. To, there it is. It's over here on this side of the page. Here we come. Now, here's gold using the same chart. All I did was I put in the 382 retracement. Well, our target on this is right here, folks, at 1825. So we've still got 20 more dollars to go. We're, in about, we're up about $22 right now. We've locked in $1,000. So what we're looking at is that we want to be able to get down to 1825. That would be ideal right here. We're having a little bit of a counter trend move here. That may lead to an ABCD to the downside, but that's what we're wait, waiting for is 1825 in the gold if we can get there. The risk on this was relatively small, about $8. And as I said, we're up quite a bit. Now we had one other one this morning that was uh, looked like it was going to be a, a good trade, but it didn't last longer than... Uh, Hector, who's about 12 years old, that little pup. Hold on just a second here. We'll get this up here so you can see it. This is a uh, four-hour chart, I believe, in the uh, – yes, it's a four-hour – excuse me, it's a daily chart uh, in the crude oil. Uh, we were looking at the 78% level here at uh, 212, and, uh, you know, I, I said, you know, put a stop in here because if it goes through there by much – you know, we could easily get up here to the 618, which is up to the 786. is way up here at 115. That trade lasted about oh, five minutes mainly. But uh, when we see these patterns, folks, we got to take them. Let's take a break. 877-927-6648. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Okay, folks, I'm going to change focus here uh, for just a moment here to talk about the grain markets. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in the news. Uh, don't watch the news very much, but in the early morning, I'd like to see what's going on, just to see that there's not been any regime changes across the world or de devaluation or something crazy. And they're talking about the fact that uh, in Odessa, Ukraine, there are these huge stockpiles of wheat and corn. So I, I know it's wheat, but I'm not sure it's corn, but they said wheat, enough to feed 400 million people. Well, that's a lot of people, folks. Uh, that's a whole, that's more than the U.S. of A, one-third of China, one-third of uh, India, but uh, they are concerned that possibly that uh, the Russians will bomb that uh, grain facility and make it inoperative. I don't believe that will happen, but even while that's happening, I posted this wheat chart here, folks. Now, you'll see here that we've had incredibly bullish uh, stuff in wheat and corn and beans, as you as you well know, but we're, we're in the midst of a correction now. And this is a very, very important correction. We're coming in to the end of May, which is one of the strongest seasonals for grain, uh, especially in soybeans. Uh, that's one of the really big ones. By the way, tomorrow I have, uh, I have a special meeting that I'm going to have to go to. And uh, I'm going to be meeting someone very famous in our business. Peter Brandt uh, lives here in Scottsdale. And a couple of us are getting together with him. Uh, early in the morning uh, to do something, and so I won't be able to be in the show uh, tomorrow, but I will be back on Monday. Uh, hopefully, we'll have Jim Bartolioni on on that day. He's been swamped, of course. Uh, but anyway, as you can see here, where I marked the key time, that's a 61% retracement, folks. Uh, that Watch that very closely, because that is a perfect 135 pattern, 135. If it lines up perfectly just like that, Oh, dear. That's that's really a low-risk trade in wheat. And remember, these grains, uh, we're, we're in the midst of some hyperinflation stuff. There's no doubt about it. We see it in gold. Uh, we see it in, uh, we, even though gold's selling off, well, it's rallying uh, down a little bit from the high that it made, but still doing pretty good. But let's take a look here. This is uh, December corn. This is new crop corn. Let me get it up here so we can take a look at it. This is another one that is uh, very, very bullish. And uh, we have to have bumper crops just to keep the world from – you can see we've been at the 382 here, one, two, three times now. 
So uh, somewhere in this area here, uh, just like in the wheat, we're going to be looking for a place to get long the corn. We might get all the way down to the 61% retracement, but you know we have to wait to see what the trading gods are going to give us. There's also that possibility of an A, B, C, D move down to this level right here. But the wheat is uh, the one that really, really looks uh, looks ready. I mean, it really does. And the last one, of course, uh, I'm going to take a look at here is the uh, soybean market. Just give me one second, and we'll get up here to take a look at it. Oh, I have a memory about this uh, this trade right here. Okay, here is the soybeans. This is uh, November. This is the new crop soybeans. You can see here we made this beautiful Gartley down in here, and there's this really strong seasonal coming in here on the 31st of May. I will tell you this story of one of my my favorite. Well, uh, well, uh, it's one of my favorite to to tell but not to remember if you know what I mean uh, this was a we had a Friday uh, we had a crop report coming in it was on the, the 27th of May 1983 I was trading on the floor of the exchange and I happened to be over in the board of trade building in the morning to see that report come out and I wanted to see you know what the action was going to be like and I put my order in at Lynn Waldock about an hour before I went over to the Board of Trade. Byron and I went over there to see what the reaction to the report was going to be in the soybean pit itself. If you were a member of either exchanges, you could go to the other exchange. You couldn't trade on the floor, but you could walk onto the floor with your Board of Trade badge. They just wouldn't take any orders because you were a different exchange. So we were watching from the gallery after going down and visiting a couple of people in the bond pit. And uh, the report came out, and I had an order setting in to buy November beans. I believe the price was something like 680, 680 and a quarter. And the market hit 679. And it took off and went limit up. The limit was 30 cents. It was down about 10 cents. So it went down 10 cents to up the limit. And I, you know, I had a couple of contracts on it. So I, I knew I had made $2,000. Well, I get back to the Lind Waldock Wal, office and I checked the, you know, the, the runs to see where the trade was. No fill. And I, I went down and, you know, I said, you know, check this out for me. And they said that there was just nothing there. The broker couldn't get it filled fast enough because it wasn't electronic. You know, he had to have his hand up and, you know, bid on the four contracts. And I didn't get filled. And, folks, they went limit up a couple more days uh, right after that. That was the day that Rick Barnes, who was uh, trading with uh, Rosenthal Collins, and uh, he was in a debit balance in, in, the bean, in the bean market. And he came out and he started bidding for a million beans. He didn't have enough money in his account. But those brokers out there, they didn't know that. Only the Rosenthal people did upstairs. And by the time it happened, it was already over. So he got that nickname, Bid a Million Barns, because he started bidding. And that took the market up, 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 up. And it went limit up. It got him out of debit. Then it went two or three more limits, and he ended up making $400 million over the next, uh, I think it was the next seven or eight years, as I recall. Uh, Jim Twentyman knows the figures, but uh, I didn't know that. I knew Rick was one of the brokers that worked for Roy Fassel in the Conti Commodity office out there in uh, Los Angeles when I first started trading. And uh, he was uh, he was a very flamboyant uh, fellow, very handsome fellow, and an incredibly good trader. Gosh, did he have... Uh, he had nerves of steel and uh, the real cojones, folks. So, but anyway, that's his story. His son is still trading, and uh, I think Rick is is retired down in Florida on his fishing boat. He doesn't trade much, from what Jim told me, but he does occasionally do something. But uh, he loves he loves fishing, and that's what he really likes to do. Okay, two more minutes before the Shane Man, the Wolf Trader, comes on. I wanted to bring in and uh, talk about another one here. That uh, is very, very important because these markets are, you know, really screaming and we'd like to see uh, everybody make a couple of bucks in this. This is why I thought this was going to be such a big bottom here in the stock market. Let's get this up here. This shows you the p amount of pessimism that we had here right now was almost half of what it was in 08 and 09, in March of 09 when we were making the bottom. That's how bearish it got, folks. So these markets can go a heck of a lot higher, and they most probably will. So this is just a five-day run, and it could be a 10-day run, a 15-day run, or it could stop today. We don't know. 
But uh, that's what we're watching as we're looking at some of these uh, markets, uh, you know, unfolding uh, today. Uh, we had a sell signal to come in at uh, 40, 50, four, excuse me, 40, 47 and a half in the uh, E-mini S&P. And uh, that's what we've uh, we're maintaining. We maintain that we have to put a 20 point stop on that because it's so volatile. But uh, that's what we're doing. I mean, that, all that's just an ABCD scalp, folks. It's uh, it's perfect. And when you have to, when you see those, you just have to get in and say, well, I live and die by the sword. As old Yogi Berra said, you have to dance to the girl, dance with the girl you brought to the dance. And ABCD is the girl I bring to the dance. And there was the number right up there. It's above the 78.6. But by golly, you still have to do it. Hey, we'll be right back with Shane Smolian, wolftrader.com. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have on the line Shane Smolian, TheWolfTrader.com. Good morning, young man. How are you doing today? Good morning, Larry. How are you today? Still living the dream, baby, on the green side of the grass. That's the way to be. <laughs> okay, right. pal, what are you looking at today? We're going up forever? Uh, I don't think so. I think I think this is a temporary thing uh, that we're seeing. So we have been focusing on the S&P for quite a few weeks now because of the substantial decline in equities. And in previous weeks, we spoke about the geomagnetic storm and its adverse effect on equities. So on March 31st, we had this really big storm that came through. 
and it it had the effect of halting the the rally in equities. So these storms come off the sun, and they take a couple of days to travel to the earth. And I'm talking about this again today because uh, we have some increased activity coming. It's actually going to start coming tonight. Uh, in general, these storms harm equity markets, and the report that I showed before uh, was published uh, by the Federal Reserve. It actually showed the negative effects of, of these geomagnetic storms on the earth. And so what does this have to do with equities? Well, uh, on March 31st, uh, two storms had merged uh, to create like a super storm. And what happened was that this created this uh, negative effect on markets. It coincided exactly with the top in the S&P on that big rally uh, into March 31st. Uh, the, the northern lights were visible all the way down to New York City. Uh, and again, the Federal Reserve of Atlanta had written about this. And so this solar storm activity, believe it or not, there's a seasonal pattern to this. So we are in May right now. At the end of May, it's actually starting to decrease into June. And uh, this actually correlates with this, the, uh, the cyclical activity of the S&P 500. So as the solar storms increase, the S&P tends to go down. As the solar storms go down, the S&P kind of rallies up. And then in October, we get a big burst of these two. And of course, that's when we get these uh, these typical patterns of the S&P uh, having crash type of situations in October. There's, that's a the, that's a classical month. Uh, so it's cru crucial to monitor these storms as they they cross come across the Earth. Uh, there's a tracking system used by NOAA that tracks the intensity of these storms called the KP index. And so uh, I'm going to go to that right now just to show you this. Uh, this. In a way, this is similar to this, the Saffir-Simpson scale. Are you, are you familiar with that, Larry, the Saffir-Simpson scale? Does it have anything to do with A, B equals C, D? No, but it's one through five. I don't think so it's, it's over my close. pay grade, buddy. It's over my pay grade. They, so that's, go ahead and tell us what they, you're looking at. Sure. So this is how they track hurricanes. Uh, so cat, when we hear Category 5, that's the Saffir-Simpson scale. Uh, this is the, called the KP index here uh, over here. And what this does is this actually will – monitor the amount of geomagnetic radiation affecting the earth and as this gets up past the level of four uh we get into what we call storms and these are the storms and you can have a minor storm a moderate storm a severe storm and it goes all the way down here and, and these are the these g5 storms are the ones that they talk about as as potentially blowing out the the electrical grids or and destroying all the, elect the electronics if we get a really big one uh, but uh, the storm that we saw back in March was relatively strong. It was kind of in this range into here, the six to seven range into here. Uh, and that that was the one that kind of stopped the market. So what's actually happening right now is uh, we're on May 26th right now. There is going to be an increase in activity. Uh, so we're right here. The, the KP is about two, but it's going to go up to three and then four. It's going to stay at four uh, tonight and then into May 28th. And so it doesn't quite classify as a storm, uh, but it, it classifies as active, okay? So we're not quite to a storm, so it's not going to be the same effect as we saw back in March. But I just wanted to point this out because um, these tend to have negative effects on the market. So this is just about to show up on the market. So for those of you who aren't familiar with what I'm talking about, uh, this was a study that was done by the Federal Reserve that showed th the weeks before uh, the, the, the storms come – compared to the weeks after, the week after the market tends to have a depressive effect after. So there is an increase in activity coming. These geomagnetic storms uh, are more predictable than hurricanes. Once they come off the sun, we pretty much know they're coming. Uh, hurricanes are a little bit tougher because you have that cone of unpredictability. So again, there's an increase in activity coming. And so I just wanted to point this out to everybody that this is something that we should be on the lookout for uh, with the S&P 500. So we're right here, and then the next few hours, the activity is going to increase, and it tends to have a negative effect on markets. Now, the S&P 500 has been in this very consistent downtrend here, uh, and this, you know, this is coinciding with the Fed, um, you know, ended QE. Uh, the Fed's in their rate hike cycle now. Uh, next month, we're going to be starting with the reduction in the balance sheet or quantitative tightening. There was also an interesting phenomenon here, too. Of, there's been a lot of money, Larry, leaving the system in something called the reverse repo facility. Uh, essentially, banks are parking money with the Fed right now. Uh, and so that has a, that's generally a negative effect on the markets. Now, that money can come back in at some point, 
Uh, but that's also kind of adding to this. We saw this recent decline. Once we hit about this area into here, this is when that reverse repo really started to increase. And so that I, I kind of weight that as a, that's a negative weight for the Fed juice. In other words, that's a negative factor. That's money leaving the system. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of uh, strikes against the S&P right now. And I think this is only going to get worse uh, as we go forward. Uh, so this, you know, we have this Fed meeting next month, June 14th to June 15th. Uh, and then uh, apparently, according to the Fed, they're going to start the quantitative tightening. Now, this has had very negative effects on the markets. We saw this in 2010 very briefly in the summer when Bernanke tried this, uh, when he really tried it. And then we've had very, very light versions of this ever since. We had different taper tantrums. Uh, but the point is this is not a good look for the S&P for sure. Uh, we had the negative effects of the of the lunar eclipse after this lunar eclipse here. Uh, and now we're getting this, this rally here. Now, typically uh, going into a, a holiday weekend. It's typically positive seasonals, but I think we have uh, a few factors coming in uh, that are going to make this probably not as positive as it would be. Uh, the first one is I think that geomagnetic activity might start to put a damper on this. Uh, it's Again, it's not quite a storm, uh, but it is an increase in activity. Uh, we have a uh, we are entering a period where the planetary speed index will be in decline. So I'm going to get into this into the next slide. Actually, let's go to this slide first. Uh, this is showing uh, – there's a lot of activity going on here, but this is showing – this where I have this pointer, this is the geomagnetic storm here ending this first rally here on May 31st – or sorry, March 31st here. And then there was a period here where the Fed tries to stimulate and the market ignores the Fed and continues down. And then this is right when those reverse repos really start taking hold. I, they just passed like $2 trillion. Uh, so that's kind of money sitting. It's money that got sucked out of the system. Uh, it's just kind of sitting there at the Fed. They're getting a very nominal rate for that money. But these are all negative effects on the market. That's that's like an anti-Fed juice. If you're taking money out of the system, that's not a good thing. And again, that's a negative weight uh, for the system. And then the negative seasonals are are, are here. Uh, and again, we have this rally today. We have this this you know couple day rally here. But I think we're in really a full on crash mode here. Uh, I think. Uh, we are going to be entering a period now once they start reducing the balance sheet. I think that is going to be devastating for equities. I mean, if they really go through with this and they start doing that, I mean, that is, that is taking things to a whole nother level uh, in terms of, of, of negative, uh, a negative weight for the market, let's just say, in terms of what the Fed is doing. Hey, let's take a break here, Shane. We'll be sure. right back with Shane Smolby and WolfTrader.com, folks. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. We're back, folks. We're speaking with the wolf trader himself, Shane Smolian. Do you want to continue, young man? Absolutely. Okay, so we have a chart here of the S&P Daily, and I, I, this is a chart showing multiple signals. I'm going to kind of go through this to show you what we have here. Uh, this this line here, this is the solar cycle. This is a, an annual cyclical pattern that you would just think of as market seasonals for the S&P 500. Uh, going all the way back, you can't even see here, but the, the Fed mm -hmm. juice and the double lunar cycle have been in a cell since early February. And talking about the Fed juice down here, this I call this the long wave Fed juice. These are the internals. Both of these are still hanging out in the cell. They have not come off that course at all. And then you can see here on the 31st, this is the geomagnetic storm right here. This is what ends this rally here. This was a double storm. Very, It was a very strong storm. Uh, and then we have the black arrows, which are the planetary speed index here. That's in a cell. We had the eclipse here, which typically tends to be negative after, which it, it, it was. Uh, and then the, the, the Stelium peak was here, and then the optimized Bradley here. So everything's really just kind of lining up right now, still into a sell pattern uh, on this S&P from a cyclical standpoint. Now, the Fed, of course, is extremely bearish right now with everything that's going on. Uh, but this is interesting because next week we are coming into the planetary speed index is making a low probably around Tuesday or Wednesday. We have Mercury Station coming up, uh, which can be tough for markets too. Uh, and then the, the optimized Bradley is still headed down. So we have another cyclical push down here uh, that could be pushing this market down uh, in the coming days. So I don't think we are out of the woods anywhere near yet here. Even when we do see these bear market rallies, they, too, they do tend to get retraced relatively quickly here. Even as impressive as some of these might look, uh, it's just a, it's a tough road. And long term, we really need to pay attention to what's going on with the Fed. Now, the U.S. dollar, I want to show this chart here because this has shown tremendous strength. And we've been picking this also up with the Fed use, too. Uh, this this really goes into this buyback here on 4.6 on the Fed use and tracks this all the way up. It just went back into a buy. I do think the strength is going to continue here on the U.S. dollar as long as the Fed is uh, following through on their word. And they're continuing to tighten and they continue to reduce this balance sheet. The U.S. dollar should continue to get stronger because the Fed is taking a leading role in the world on this. So I think that's going to continue and that's going to create probably more headwinds for gold, too, uh, and, and Bitcoin. Now, I also spoke about the correlation between Bitcoin and the S&P 500. I believe that this is still a very strong correlation. So we need to look at what is going on with Bitcoin in addition to the S&P 500. This is a new link, but I think we need to look at it. Bitcoin is entering a very negative cycle that could start to drag the S&P lower. It's just now starting to head down on the cycle, and it's been diverging negatively into that cycle. So when you see a situation where a market diverges ahead of a cycle, that's not good. So uh, in other words, Bitcoin's been heading lower, and this cycle has, is just now starting to top here. Uh, we have multiple cycles on Bitcoin now that are starting to turn lower. So uh, if we look at um, 
many of the, the, the correlated assets too, like RK Innovation, they look very, very weak right now. Uh, and so, and Bitcoin is really the key to all of this. And, and, and so, uh, I'm very concerned right now about crypto because Bitcoin's really the leader. And if Bitcoin starts heading down, you're going to see more, uh, more struggles in, in, in this, uh, this crypto arena. And I think that, you know, Bitcoin, like I said, is, is going to travel with the S and P here, uh, likely to the downside. So, uh, you know, this is. A, I'm going to show you another chart here. This is. Oh, this is the daily statistics of Bitcoin. Today is the weakest statistical day of the week for Bitcoin, and it was down early. I think it's up, maybe coming up a little bit now. Uh, but uh, you know, Bitcoin, in terms of the solar cycle, uh, it's it's ready to start heading down, and so people need to pay attention to this because it's been it's been struggling into a peak, and when a cycle struggles into a peak, that's not a good sign. And I think a similar thing's been happening to gold. I'm going to talk about that this Saturday. Uh, in, in the webinar, I'm going to talk about gold. Like, what's wrong with gold? Why isn't gold going higher? Shouldn't gold be higher? I mean, people feel like gold is, oh, it's going to catch up. It's going to catch up. I don't think so. I think I think gold is pretty much baked in now. And I think if we get any downturn in inflation, which we probably will uh, a little bit, it's probably going to come off that 8.3% that high. But I think gold now uh, is going to struggle along with Bitcoin. This is RK Innovation. We've had this Fed use in a cell since February the 10th, we've had this in a cell, and it's really showing no signs here uh, that it's trying to bottom, and this is going to go with Bitcoin too, so I think we have to be careful about this. Um, you know, this, these are great concepts for the future. I love Tesla. I, I like Bitcoin for the future, but right now, I don't think this is a, a very good-looking situation. Again, it's been short since 73.79 on February 10th, so it's still just in a pretty clean sell right now it's not really showing any signs As, aside from these little tiny bear market rallies we really don't see any sign here that this is going to turn around same thing with the spider biotech i just threw this in here too this has been in a sell since february the 25th uh both of these are looking extremely bearish so uh, i talked about the bitcoin after the lunar eclipse tends to be negative that's playing out uh gold gold is kind of choppy after the lunar eclipse but one thing that i do point out to people is in 2020, all three of these assets went down together. So, uh, you know, just something to pay attention to, something to be careful about. Um, Apple, again, there's another one. The Fed use has been in a cell since uh, September the 1st. So, uh, tough, tough road here. Now, long-term cycles. Let me talk about it. Larry, are you familiar with the Jupiter cycle? Oh, I know where Jupiter is, but uh, it's a big one. All I know that for a fact. Yeah, I so... People were asking me about, well, what, you know, Shane, what you talk about the Fed, you talk about these short term cycles. What about on like a like a decade basis? Where's the S&P? Like, what, what would that look like? So there is an interesting Jupiter cycle occurring on the S&P 500. So the Jupiter cycle is roughly 12 years. So it passes through each sign of the zodiac in about 12 years. And so what happens is it spends about one year in each zodiac sign. And so when we, we put this to the S&P 500, we can get roughly a 12-year cycle. So I'm going to show you some very interesting slides here. This gives, I went back on the Dow Jones on this. Because Jupiter is a 12-year cycle, uh, we need to go back very far in time. We need to go back to the early 1900s. Uh, it just made a peak in March of 2022. So... This is interesting too because this coincided with the rally that we had in March. Uh, in March, so uh, up into here, you can see this is the peak. So I'm gonna I'm gonna illustrate this so you can see this. This so this black line here, this is the the Jupiter cycle. Okay, so uh, you can see it has these dips and and rises, but it has a very distinct peak here. And this peak was right here in 2022. The red line here, this is the Dow Jones. I I use the Dow Jones because it goes back further. Uh, but this makes a very clear peak here, and this peak was in um, March of 22, and it heads down mainly through 2026 here. So you can see that if we're just looking at a long-term cycle here, the S&P just hit it. The S&P just hits this long-term cycle high, and uh, these cycles, they can tend to do very well if, if we're not having a strong Fed in the markets uh, so right now the Fed is pulling back, and these cycles tend to be much more accurate. That's why it, it, it made such an incredible high uh, in March. I'm going to go to the next slide. It's going to show this actually zoomed in. Uh, so you can see this here. This is the Jupiter cycle. Now, the one thing I want to point out here is that I, I stopped the data here. We'll talk about this when we get back. 
going to take a break, folks. Shane Smolian, WolfTrader.com. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Okay, we're back, folks, finishing up with Shane Smolian, WolfTrader.com. Shane, I have a question for myself, and that is uh, we have a direct station in Mercury coming up shortly in June, don't we? We do. We do, June 3rd. And, you know, uh, when, when markets are falling, uh, this can be trouble for the S&P. I mean, any time Mercury is making a station, you know, it's, a, it's an important planet. And the, the, the speed of the planets, when they tend to be slow in general, all of them, mm -hmm. Uh, it tends to be negative for the markets. So we got to look at all the planets, but next week is a critical week for the S&P. And like I said, with all of these cycles coming in here, we could see some more downside next week in this market too. Very, very good. You want to tell the folks about an upcoming webinar or something that they might be interested in? Yeah. Uh, so so if, if anybody wants to reach me, you can uh, go to – let me see if I can find the slide here. You can go to uh, – wolftraderfutures.com and we have a webinar every saturday uh wolf trader futures is the name of the of the the youtube channel okay so we've been talking about the s p i don't think i want to talk about it anymore we've been talking about it for like five <laughs> weeks here I'm tired of it it's going down i can't yeah. think we established that uh i'm going to talk about gold this weekend because i think gold is an important topic why what's wrong with gold why is it looking so bad relative to the inflation picture and, and where can we expect it to go so i'm going to talk about that what I think's wrong with it, what where I think it's going, 
Uh, and so we're going to shift gears a little bit here because I'm, I'm tired of talking about the S&P. So. <laughs> <laughs> that makes good sense. I know that yeah. feeling every morning when it opens. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hey, listen, thanks for joining us, and we'll have you on again uh, really soon. And keep up the great work. And I know your program's going well. And congratulations towards that. So we'll see you in a couple weeks then, or earlier if you see something that's really important. Okay, maybe maybe come around to June the third because oh, that's next week. Because uh, uh, I like that Mercury thing. I've, uh, I've lived and died by Mercury as a planet for timing, and it's really good. So we'll have you on uh, maybe the third. But that would that work out for you as far as Absolutely. a uh, you just okay. You just name we'll the we'll date. I'll on. be here, Larry. Yep. Okay, that'll be next Friday. So we'll have you on then. Okay. Thanks so much, Larry. Have a great okay. day, everybody. You bet, folks. See you tomorrow, folks. By the way, I will be here tomorrow. It's it's a luncheon meeting, not a breakfast meeting. <laughs>